Walks again tougher and tougher. Uh, students of the week, Cordell Russell, freshman sociology, Arden Walker, sophomore sociology. Attendance, 53,972, six largest in Folsom um, history, largest crowd in 19 years. Thank you, fans. I love you to life. Shador broke three school records on Saturday, highest completion percentage for both minimum 30 and 40 attempts, most consecutive completions in a game, 16. I had no idea of that. LeJonte Travis became CU, the seventh CU player to catch a TD pass in five straight games, seven touchdowns, 26 receptions, highest percentage of touchdowns, receptions in 69 years at CU. Wow. CU is one of the two schools nationally with multiple receivers with six or more TDs, also. Sacks, the Buffs had nine sacks in the last two games after having five in the first four. B.J. Green got his first two sacks Saturday uh, against K-State. Also, Taj McCoy, Taj McCoy had three sacks in the last two games. Uh, defense giving up seven points of turnovers the season on six turnovers. CU ranks seven nationally. And the first in Big 12 in red zone defense. Injury, Travis should uh, play for certain on Saturday. Jimmy as well. Um, Timmons, uh, Marion, um, those two guys are probably out. And uh, Will Shepard should play as well. Um, great game. Came out on the short end. We did not play indicative of who we are. We didn't stop the run. Is what it was. Move on. Let's flip the page. Let's get ready. Let's focus. Had a good week, a good day of preparation today. Had a great practice. The guys flew around, got to it. Defense was truly physical today. Um, it was a great day. Great day of practice. I love to start off the week in that manner. Let's go. Hi, Coach. How are you doing? Good. How are you? Uh, Thanks, Nick sir. Edwards, Hughes Sports Report. After coming off such a close game against Kansas State, what is the message this week? What's the focus this week to get ready for Arizona? Uh, accountability. Everyone must take accountability in their efforts, their preparation, um, the habits that we incurred in the game, the things that uh, we didn't do well at, to really hold yourself accountable to those things. Let's see you put it in to work today, the weight room, film room. Um, training room to get healthy and, and ultimately out on the field so we can improve the areas of concern. So, so the guys took it upon themselves and they came out there with a certainly a different attitude. Sometimes uh, you get intoxicated a little bit with winning and start thinking that you're really like that. And uh, this uh, Saturday was a, a wake up call for a multitude of us. Hey coach, I noticed on the well off video yesterday you talked about how maybe there's some new standards for guys who will and won't practice day after games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did yeah, I read yeah. that into that correctly? Um, and could you maybe explain your thinking behind that? When, you, when you're coaching, you're always trying to up the level. You're always trying to take your team to the next level, take your business to the next level, take your life, your relationships, anything to the next level. And when you sit, when you step out of it for a moment and you think about it, you say, okay, I know I'm trying to take care of the guys that play 60% of the snaps and give them a day rest. And you try to really develop some of the other guys that didn't get the opportunity to play. That's the whole thought process. But if you give up several sacks and you see the guys over there, what does that say to the team? What does that say to, for the teammates? You got to really think about all those things. If we're giving up deep balls and you're over there chilling and you just, you know, your teammates looking at you like, hey, Shoot, why are you in that? You may be working on your game. Same thing with the giving up uh, 200 yards rushing, over 200 yards rushing. Every linebacker should want to practice that day. So that's the thought process, just challenging these guys to work on their craft, work on their game, to take it to the next level if they want to be pros. If you don't, I understand. Uh, but when you came in, you said you do. That we're going to hold you accountable to that. That's the thought process behind it. Hi, Coach. Adam Monster Tiger, 24-7 Sports. Ho hope you're doing well. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned Omari and Miller's not going to – play on Saturday. Right. Uh, what, what's your message for him? Is there a chance he might be able to come back at, at I don't know. Season? I really don't know. I think he had surgery uh, yesterday. So um, I don't think he'll be back this season. I mean, our message is for him is to get yourself together when it's time to re rehabilitate yourself and get in the right frame of mind so you could come out bigger, stronger, and faster and better. Because the kid is a uh, I would say fifth man. That's one of the best fifth men in the country. You know, if he's our fifth receiver, which we don't say that, but he's one of the best in the nation to me. 
and I'm proud of him. I'm proud of him for just staying focused, knowing he wasn't a starter, but he had the ability to start. But when he came in, he gave you everything he had. Proud of him. Hey, good morning, Coach. How you yes, doing? Yes, sir. Good. Good, good. Mike Lamonte, uh, FI360 News. So, question, um, being that you're probably one of the most popular people on the planet. I don't you, know about that. You, it's arguable. <laughs> you and the former president. Mm. How do you? How does your faith help you navigate life? Being a well, faith man? is everything to me because I don't flinch. Yeah, I trust God, not man. Yeah. You know, when we win, you guys write good things. When we lose, you you tell the truth and you write bad things. So the same thing with our young men. Same thing with our kids. You blow them up, then you blow them down. You know, you build them up to tear them down. So I don't flinch. I try to rock steady because I trust God and not man or one man. So I'm thankful and appreciative to to have the relationship I have with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because I've been down before, but, you know, and oftentimes when we testify, we don't testify about everything. We testify about the things we just want you to know about, not the, the depth of where God brought me from, not the thought process that what I really wanted to do, I didn't actually do it, and he brought me from that. We don't testify about that because we don't want you to know who we really are. So we keep on this mass scare up, sort of bit. Good question, though. Hey, Coach. Brian, how, how you doing? David Cameron. I have uh, two questions for you. Uh, first off, just Arizona. It's a familiar uh, foe you guys yeah. saw last year. What do you see out of them this year? Arizona's a, uh, I say this every week, but I'm not lying, it's a well-coached team. These uh, got a great quarterback, I feel. Uh, one of the best receivers in the nation, if not the best, arguably. This kid is certainly a pro. Um, let's start right there. You got to deal with those two. Um, quarterback can make all the throws. Um, he doesn't look to run, but he can run. But he has tremendous escape ability. They got running game, and they can move the ball. They can move the ball up and down the field. Defensively, they got some big guys in the middle. To try to, they're stout uh, versus the run somewhat. I'm not going to say they're vulnerable on the pass. Everybody seems like they're vulnerable to what we have out there at receiver. But these guys play complementary defense, and they get after it, man. They get to the ball. They're relentless. They attack uh, the predators on the field. They get to the ball, and they make plays. So it's going to be a tremendous task. You mentioned McMillan, the receiver. Um, he's obviously one of the best in the country. Yes. Yeah, as a corner, uh, how, how much did you get kind of amped up when you were go going against, like, the, the elite receivers? And That was my know, life. Yeah. I didn't so, have to get amped up. That was my life. So did you get, like, when you, going against Jerry Rice, things like that? That was get my extra? life. Okay. You don't get amped up when that's your life. It's like saying you get amped up to get in the car. I'm going to do that anyway to come to work. That's my life. Coach Ryland Skulls from Ralphie Report. Yes, sir. So you were 4-2 and two at the same point last season, 4-2 yes, again. How much of a difference do you see in the group last year and the group this year? Well, let's year? start with the coaches. The coaching staff is tremendously different, um, very talented, truly smart, intelligent, and understands what we have inside this locker room. The young men we have on this team is truly different. I think you could tell that by at least five scouts coming to practice every day. So. I don't compare yesterday to today, and I would hope that you wouldn't either in your personal life because it's a whole new day, whole new year, whole new time, whole new uh, thought process, whole new outlook on life. And I don't look at yesterday and compare those two, not whatsoever. But that's a great question. But this is a whole different team, and I'm proud to coach it. I really am. Hey, Coach, John Treach, Nine News. How resilient is your team? Um, our team is uh, – truly resilient, but we shouldn't be in that position. I don't like to be in that position that we have to show you that real resilient. We are at home. We should be in that position. We, we should make the plays that come to us. We should um, get off the field and make the stops that we know we're capable of making if all 11 of us do the thing that we're supposed to do and execute the play that's called. But I am so proud of these young men in so many aspects. But then again, I want to hold them accountable in those same aspects because I want this relatable to life, not just the game. I want them to be able to succeed up under pressure as well as scrutiny in life, not just football. But I love uh, what I saw. I really wanted to get down there and, and get in moderate range. I really did because I know he was going to nail it. And I felt like if we just got it to overtime, if Shador wouldn't have got us down there to win it, we we were going to win it because of just who we are and your resilience that you spoke about. We never gave up. That's what I love about him. Hey, Coach, uh, Pat Graham, Associate Press. Yes, sir. Um, with every pass that Shador throws, he, his draft stock rises. Um, I guess how do you separate the coach and what he's doing from the father and what he's doing? Uh, 
I think you guys are concerned about that. We've always been what we are. We don't know it no other way. So it's quite easy for me because I've always been in this position with him. Um, we walk down that sideline as the father. When we come back, I'm the coach. I think everybody knows that. You guys should know that by now. When we make our walk before the game, I'm dad. I'm saying things that a dad would say. When we come back, I'm the coach. I'm saying things that a coach would say. And from then on, I'm his coach. Morning, Coach. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Scott Proctor at the Colorado Inn. Um, you mentioned a little bit about T-Mac, Arizona star receiver. Yeah. Uh, he went for, I think, 109 yards touchdown last year. From mm -hmm. your perspective, what's the best way to try to slow him down? And obviously, you and Coach Livingston have a penchant for playing man defense. Is that mm -hmm. something you Well, we, we don't want to give away the game plan, but we're going to try our best. I mean, a lot of people have tried their best, but the kid is phenomenal. He's exceptional. That's why he's one of the best in the country. And as a quarterback, that one of his best friends that's going to find a way to get him that ball. It's kind of like what Shador and, and Travis does. So it's going to be a task, man. But uh, I'm pretty sure our guys will be up for it. Kid is exceptional. Hey, Coach Howard. How you doing? Doing good. Um, I saw a clip recently. I think you were with uh, Matt Barnes. Yeah. Uh, and you shared a, a really personal story about when you were struggling with your mental health. Right. I'm just curious why you felt important to share that story. Well, that was uh, last year, I believe, when we recorded that. Um, but it's still true to today. It's a lot of people, even in this room, that's struggling with uh, success, struggling with failure, struggling with mediocrity, struggling with just being accountable. And no one talks about it, especially men. Women could talk all day about their trials and tribulations, but we want to be, we want to have this bravado, and we don't know how to disclose things because we're scared that someone's going to say something about it. I'm not. I mean, if God allowed me to go through this stuff and he allowed me to reach a pinnacle of something, he wants me to be honest and transparent with you in every realm. And that's who I am. That's what I am. That's how I am. That's how I get down. So everything you hear me say is 100. I don't falsify nothing. I don't placate nobody. When you ask me about my kid, I told you the truth. Okay? When you asked me about the line last year, I told you the truth. You attacked me for that, but you didn't attack me for the other one. I just wanted that to resonate for a minute. <laughs> but uh, mental health is serious. Spiritual health is, is serious. And I wish we had an antidote to both. I, I rely on Jesus. And I, I, I can't tell you what to rely on, but that's my source. That's my strength. That's my doctor. Hi, Coach. Taylor Sedan, How are you Sports doing? Illustrated. Fantastic. How about you? Good. Good, good. Just thinking about like the the brotherhood through injury through like trials and tribulations. How has that been looking like this so far in this year? Like with That's your team great. and whatnot. I mean, it's, it's good that you recruit like you recruit. It's good that you sign players out of the portal that's already ready. It's good that we have a balance um, of of youngsters that can step up and do the job. Um, that's why we do what we do. It, it's hard to to have a quarterback like you have, and then three or four guys go down, and you got a field full of freshmen. You, you you gotta understand what it looks like to a quarterback. Like, oh Lord, where am I? Where you know, where am I going through? Who's gonna get up? Who's gonna run the right route? Thank God that uh, we have a recruiting department that does a phenomenal job that goes into the portal and get those guys that are already ready, as well as developing those young guys that may take that role on head on. Like a bunch of them practice today because we gave a, a break to a lot of our guys that were limping a, and a little injured. We want them to be 100% come Saturday, not 100% on Tuesday. Jack Harlow with Buffalo's Wire. Um, another close game for you guys on Saturday. Yeah. Had a ton of close games last year. Just overall, how have you seen your players kind of grow and embrace some of those close minutes? You know, it's a well, little score game late. Like last year, I stated this early on in the season. Uh, once upon a time, it was just hope. Like, man, we hope we can stay in this game. You know, we hope we can do this. Now it's expectation. Like, we really expect to win those games. That, that stuff hurts, man. It, like, it, it hurts and, uh, because we expect to win. We don't expect to compete. We expect to win. So in all aspects of, of, of life, on as well as off the field, I want our young man to expect to be successful. And that's where we are right now. Thank God. We have a bunch of like-minded men as well as coaches, as well as support staff that expect to be successful. That's why it hurts so bad. You quit reminding me of that, all right? Let me move on to Arizona, please. <laughs> we good? Anybody else? So we got one more? Want to do one more? One more. Hey, Coach. Harrison Simeon, Skill Bus Sports. Michael Welch saw the field a bit on Saturday. Yeah. He didn't log a touch. Do you expect him to be added back to the fold going forward? 
Um, I think he played. I think he played. Um, you got to understand he had a hamstring injury now that he was nursing, that he was trying to come back on. He didn't uh, practice every day last week. So you kind of bring him back slowly. Um, two, three may get the nod this week. Everyone else has started but him. So he may get, he may be that back this week to get this opportunity to do his thing. So we kind of, it's not nothing that they didn't do well. It's, it's, it's just rotation, seeing who clicked with what. And the kid can play ball. All our backs are good, man. Charlie's good. Charlie ain't done nothing wrong. We just trying new things to see what fit. But think about it, we, we got to, we got to create holes so they can hit. We got to do that. And I'm, I'm pretty sure our linemen are going to take on that challenge tremendously. They had a great practice today. And I expected them to uh, reap the benefits of those practices and with consistency. We good, everybody? Okay. Thank you. God bless you.